But you know, along with this, we've got some bigger issues we have to deal with. We have, we have professing believers today that take the basic Bible principles like faithfulness in the house of God, faithfulness in the Bible studies, faithfulness in tithing, faithfulness in growing in the Lord, and just don't take it very seriously. Well, let me ask you something. How is America ever going to have to get their memory loss back if they don't take God's principles back? Our forefathers, the John Adams, the George Washingtons, the Noah Websters, and all the ones that we read about, Abraham Lincoln, they said, this, this right here is the key to our life. It's the key to our schools. It's the key to our, to our conduct. It's the key to the integrity and the character of our life. This right here is what we need to base our life upon. Amen. Amen. Many years ago, Bob James was governor of Alabama. Congress wanted to write a definition of the family. Bob James, who was governor in, the first, in his first term, went to Washington and said, if we really want to write the definition of a family, let's go to the Word of God. He was told, we're not going to use the Bible for that definition. He said, well, fine, you don't need me. And he headed back to Alabama. What is wrong today? I mean, when we look at the founding fathers and we look at the Declaration of Independence and we look at all, all our forefathers and what they did and what they stood for and, and the, the principles of God were and how important it was, and then we wonder why we don't see the power of God today. Folks, something's just not right. Amen. Number one, we need to take prayer more seriously. These are things we can work on. Number two, we need to take God's principles more seriously. These are things that we can work on. When I talk about the principles here, we teach our kids. We teach them the values of, of growing up, and getting a good job, having a good family, and, and a good education. But you know, one thing that we don't need to leave out at all is the importance of knowing Christ. If you look here at verse 10 in, in, in Judges chapter 2, verse number 10, it said after Joshua died, there raised a generation who knew not the Lord. Everybody catch that? A generation. People 40 years old that knew not the Lord. This was the same God that parted the seas. This was the same God that led them out of bondage in Egypt. This was the same God that, that led Moses and then Joshua. And then all of a sudden we see that, that people say, you know what? We're doing great. We don't need God anymore. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to compromise. We're going to be ourselves. Everybody has rights. And we're going to do what we think is right. And the Bible says that they did evil in the sight of God. And there was a generation that knew not the Lord. There are people my age today that I am just amazed in the late 40s that don't know hardly anything about the Lord. Raised, raised out of church. Raised, raised without knowing anything about it. And I have not been in church all my life. I was not raised in church. But I am just amazed today how many people today? There's almost like a generation that knows not the Lord. Amen? Amen. Look, we have to take God's principles more seriously. As one of our founding fathers said, this right here is the key to our conduct, our integrity. The Republic rests on this right here. Amen? Amen. Number one, we need to take our prayers more seriously. Number two, we need to take God's principles more seriously. Then number three, we need to take people perishing more seriously. As I was studying this week, I thought about something that I thought was very, very important. Periodically, as a pastor, you get a call. And a call is not always good. Pastor, I need you to come. What's wrong? So-and-so is in the hospital and they're not going to make it. 
Pastor, there's this little child that got an accident. It's on life support. Doctors calling the family together. I've seen it from the youngest to the oldest. I've been there when you watch the machine and it's dee, 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 and all of a sudden just a straight line all the way across. I've been there where they took the sheet and just covered the body. And I've seen the pain on people's face and the suffering. I've seen the pain, and I'm sure some of you have, where somebody's had a terminal illness. I've seen the pain of the, the natural disasters like the hurricane, tornadoes, the floods, etc. I've seen the disasters just like you have of the recent economy blunders like, like the, 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 the recession that we're in. But you know what's worse than all this? is when a person dies and spends eternity in hell. Amen. And what's even worse than that, when Christians stand by and have the audacity to do 